What went wrong during Aaron Rex's time with Impact Wrestling? This is BQ, and I do this for the Global Force Wrestling fans. Well, how about instead of focusing on those yahoos, you focus yourself on Eli Drake? So when Aaron Rex came over to the company, which was TNA at the time, I was extremely excited about this. He was somebody, when I had watched the other company, that I liked a great deal. And not for his Mizdow stuff, which he was really you know popular for and got over for, but... I liked his prior stuff as the intellectual savior of the masses. I was a big fan of his. When he was released, he was someone that I had said several times, this guy's a must, this guy will put butts in the seats, this guy's over, have to get him, have to bring him over. And I wasn't so sure that was going to happen. And, you know, he did several interviews where he was, you know, not even sure he was going to continue wrestling. So Aaron Rex comes over. Makes his debut. He, he uh, They let us know on Twitter. He lets us know. And uh, Impact Zone is very full that night. Uh, as, as I suspected. I felt that if he came to the company, he was going to put some butts in the seats. So he does this promo. He comes down and it's a big deal. I mean, they make a real big deal out of this dude. He just comes out in a dress shirt and uh, jeans, I believe. Comes out. Cuts his great promo. You know, of course, he takes a little uh, little dig there at his former employer, as he said. But for the most part, you know, he just kind of did did his own thing. He went out there with a live mic because I think it was a live episode, and he just did his thing. You know, he was not a he was not a handcuffed. He wasn't forced to do any kind of gimmicks. He was just just him. And he had said from this point forward, he would be known as Aaron Rex. And he really got a reaction out of the, out of the crowd. And at the times that the Impact Zone, you know, during that promo, and even, you know, the first few episodes he was there, if they got kind of quiet, he would he would pump them up. And he um, he has something which I said Alberto uh, El Patron had. He was so used to a big stage that when he, you know, he has a crowd like that, he has the uh, confidence and charisma to get him, to get him riled up and fired up and, and going. So that was something... That I, I something I appreciate about uh, appreciate about Alberto and something I appreciated about Aaron Rex. So Aaron Rex, he didn't make his debut for a couple episodes. I mean, they really made this guy seem like a big deal, and it seemed like he wanted to be a uh, a serious character this time. He wanted to go out there and compete. He had said in a Facebook Live that he was so used to being a Joe character that he didn't get to go out there and just wrestle and show what he could do and compete. Like it was always it was always funny. Even when he was the intellectual savior, I mean, there was still humor to that. So I think it's um, it, it's just one of the most bizarre things ever happened in the company. I shouldn't say that in the last couple of years, and uh, he, they put him in the Impact Grand Championship tournament. He beats Trevor Lee, and uh, I believe in the finals. Ooh, uh, it was the semifinals. I mean, I, I don't quite remember who he went up against, but so he won both his matches, and he's going to. At the time, I believe it was uh, Bound for Glory in the finals against Drew Galloway. So they, you know, they're giving him something real big, and I think, you, you know, I think uh, at first when he was he was wrestling those first few matches, I really think he felt like a main eventer. He uh, he was on uh, what was the match? A six sides of steel match. It was four on four. Uh, EC3's team against someone. I, I don't remember if EC3. I think he was a baby face at the time. So, you know, and that was a match full of main eventers. And so, Bound for Glory comes. He's in the finals. Drew Galloway gets hurt. I fully believe Drew Drew Galloway was supposed to win that title that night. And he got hurt. So, they replace him with Eddie Edwards. I'm thinking, okay, cool. You know, two of my favorite guys. This should be really good. They did a five-round decision. Instead of the three rounds that the Grand Championship does, they did five rounds. This match drug out. It was boring. It was the worst show on the card by far. So, and Aaron Rex wins. Now, when they when they did the decision, for me as a viewer, I don't know about you guys, I totally thought Eddie Edwards won. And I thought Eddie Edwards was right for the title. So, Aaron Rex wins. He's the first Impact Grand Champion. And as to the long list of WWE guys who come in and win a title. And it seemed like that title was important to him. And he always says, you know, we're going to change the game. We're going to change the game with this. So we never really got to see Aaron Rex just wrestle for the most part. He was in that six sides of steel, but that was still a gimmick match. We just didn't get to see him compete. So he's 
defending the grand championship. And he's and what I liked about the grand championship at first was that you know anyone could wrestle for it. You didn't have to be a big dog. So you know you had a match against like Baron Dax, for instance, and he would have just random title defenses. And I was at Bound for Glory, and then I was at the next night of tapings, and he had two title defenses. And they were almost back to back in the way that the tapings went. Like he he wrestled Baron Dax, and then uh I don't remember who his other opponent was that night, but it was only a couple matches later as far as the live audience. So he he single handedly like took the crowd out of the match because the impact zones always had a hard time getting behind these grand championship matches. And he just always won and uh he started getting boring to people. And people were like, well, where's the where's the charisma that you used to have? And I get that he was tr- kind of trying to get away from that. Like, he wanted to do something different. He wanted to compete, like I said. But it was getting... People weren't buying it. The company starts turning him heel. And I thought that was working. Okay, we're tapping into that intellectual savior gimmick a little. I was like, okay, cool. You know, they're uh, they're adjusting on the fly. That's fine. You know, as, as you should. I think that you should in uh, many cases. Has a little mini feud with Jesse Goddard's, which was cool because we got to see, you know, Goddard's do something. And that didn't go anywhere. He, uh, he, it was kind of building up like Jesse Goddard's was going to get the comeuppance. And, uh, Aaron Rex was always cheating. Um, you know, put, you know, had that punch or whatever. I don't know if he was putting on rings or whatever. And he, uh, he kept beating him. And then him and Jesse had a normal match. Jesse won. And then nothing ever happened of it. Nothing. And again, with this, with every match that he does, he's losing more and more steam. Every time he's on the camera wrestling, he's losing more and more steam. Now, I don't think this is Aaron Rex's fault. I, I honest to God, don't. I think the Grand Championship was wrong for him, and I think that's what ultimately ruined him. Because if he were to just come in and, you know, kind of be a big deal, I, th- I really think it would have worked. I mean, I was really disappointed that it didn't. But I, I, I want to say that I don't think it was his fault at all. I don't think he did anything wrong. But then he has a grand championship match with Moose, and he loses in, I, I don't remember, like like a minute and a half or something like that. And then they have a rematch later. Moose wins. And, dude, he's just floundering. Like, they just don't know what's going on with this guy. Moose is obviously the new face of that division. And then he comes back with the Liberace gimmick, and he's got Rockstar Spud, and people were destroying this. And the crazy things, we always talk about the double standards. Like, this was the most over guy in wrestling at one point. The minute he comes over to the TNA side, I mean, he's getting trolls, and, you know, it, you you all know how it goes. It's ridiculous. But he, um, he was floundering, does the Liberace gimmick, he's got Spud, and I kind of wanted to see where it went, to be honest with you, I mean, they did some vignettes and some backstage segments, I think he may have wrestled one or two matches, but I, I I don't think we all knew what to make of it yet, a lot of people hated it, and I guess that was a gimmick that he tried to do years ago, so I wanted to see where it went, they were like the best, uh, like the bridesmaids, no, they weren't the bridesmaids, I don't know what their role was in the wedding, I think they were groomsmen, him and Spud, and he was crying and everything. He was adding so much to that uh, Braxton and LVN wedding. And then all of a sudden, he's just gone from the company. Because at that point, the new regime comes in. You know, they wanted to make some cuts. And I got the feeling that the company wanted to get rid of the people that Dixie tried to bring over as, as um, you know, as Buzz. You know, Aaron Rex, uh, Brandy Rhodes. You know what I mean? Like, uh, let's get some of these ex-WWE people in here. Get some Buzz. And I think that's what the company did. They, they said, okay, we're going to cut these people that we really feel aren't performing and they just came here based on a name and that was it for Aaron Rex and I think I want to say he lasted about six months or so in the company and he went from a serious character I mean go back and look at that he was a he he did the promo and then he was the guest referee for EC3 and Galloway and uh you know that's when Galloway jumped them and they kind of started building the feud but I mean he felt like a main eventer I mean just look that stuff up it's it's mind-boggling and then for him to go right back to the comedy character so what do you guys think happened to Aaron Rex I mean what where do you think it went wrong for me personally like I said I just don't think he had that uh, a fair shake with the title I didn't think he I don't think he had a good match to show off what he could do and above all that he showed up out of shape and I think that hurt him that was the one part I think that he had control of that really hurt him he showed up out of shape Next set of tapings, he looked considerably slimmer. You know, it seemed like he was losing weight, but 
he definitely showed up, you know, 30, 40 pounds, uh, maybe not that much, uh, 20, 30 pounds overweight. And uh, a lot of people noticed it. So I want to know in the comments what you guys think about Aaron Rex's time with the company, what happened, and uh, do you think he got a fair shake or not? Please subscribe to the channel. We, we're talking Global Force Wrestling just about each and every day. And uh, I'd appreciate your subscription. This is BQ, and I'm out.